Now, you're no stranger to China. You also directed the third and final installment of the Mummy franchise, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, and it was shot in various parts of China. So what kind of research or Chinese history boot camp did you have to endure in order to shoot this film? Well, I've been in Chinese boot camp since I was eight years old. Uh, when, I, when I was eight, my mother took up watercolors and all of a sudden the house was filled with these books, a lot of which were about Chinese watercolors. So as an eight-year-old, I was going through these books and going, where is this place? Who are these people? Right? And so that seed was planted that brings us actually sitting here today when I was eight years old, because once I got onto the Chinese aesthetic and their, their sense of beauty or subtlety, I was completely fascinated by it and began to pursue interests in China all the way along. I will read and read and read and read till I feel I have a grasp of it. And that's what I did with the tomb of Xinjuangdi and, and trying to understand all the forces that went into that. And was that a good experience filming in China back then? The best. It was new and there was uh, an unfamiliarity with everybody. As the movie went on, I began to rely on the Chinese crew more than the Western crew. I, I can tell you a little story sure, if it's a good yeah. story. You know, I wanted to do this shot that I saw in the morning up on a ridge, but it was a techno crane shot. So it's a very big multi-ton piece of equipment. And uh, I went to the Western grips and I said, I need to get the techno up on that ridge, you know, and I want it to be like a magic hour shot. So I need it up there around three o'clock. Mm -hmm. And the grips looked at me like, are you crazy? They go, we can't be done maybe by tomorrow, but we have to take it all apart and look for roads and you know, all this stuff. So I, <laughs> I went over to our Chinese key grip and I said, can I get the techno up on that ridge? And I expected the same reaction. He goes, when you want it. <laughs> I said, three o'clock? Okay, you'll be shooting three o'clock. And they lashed bamboo poles to the techno and got everybody on the Chinese crew, whether they were in the makeup department or hair or wardrobe, everybody was under the pole and they were just chanting, e -R and they would move the thing like six inches, six inches, six inches. And they moved it up to that ridge and I was shooting by three o'clock. And after that, I sent all the Western grips home and let the Chinese take over. And that kind of dedication touched me so deeply. Now, now going back to Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, that was kind of your breakout role as a director yeah. in 1993. It became quite a hit starring Jason Scott Lee. Yes. I loved the film. I was a fan of the actor myself as well. <laughs> and now I know you talked about your childhood and eight years old looking at those Chinese watercolors. Is that what drew you to write the screenplay for this film and also direct it? Well, yes, because at that point, other than using Asian actors in certain things, my television work and when I was producing, I hadn't really been able to grasp a movie that really was about this passion I had. And in the, the Bruce Lee story, you had a, a classic story of an immigrant coming to the United States who wanted to share the Chinese culture with the West. That, he fought fights over that because there are many martial arts schools which are, we don't teach the Guai Lo, we don't, you don't teach white people uh, how to use martial arts and our secrets. But he was a lover of humanity and of course the interracial love story at a very early time in American development, like the 50s, you know, to see what he and Linda battled and, and how it might have affected their marriage and affected their children and so on. I just was so passionate to get it done that I just 
busted out any obstacle in my way. Now, Bruce Lee, the man himself, he really did become like the first Asian actor to break through Hollywood. Right. But in doing so, it also kind of left behind or perpetuated the typecasting of Asian actors in Hollywood films as martial arts stars, gangsters, etc. Do you think that now that China and the United States are strengthening their collaboration on movies that we're going to see another breakthrough of Asian actors in America. Yeah, well, that would be my hope, you know, because, I mean, there was only one Bruce Lee, right? There was only one. And, you know, there are other greats like Jackie Chan, but Jackie Chan was a smart guy. He looked at the Bruce Lee thing and he's gone, there's only one Bruce Lee. I'm going to do the comedy version, right? He looked to Chaplin and Keaton and those cinematic people uh, of history to, to say, okay, I have all this physical ability. Why don't I do a drunken policeman? Or why, why don't I do a, a fun version of martial arts as opposed to the hyper serious Bruce Lee version. So we have to take the, the mandate from people like Bruce and Jackie and carry it into this new, more sophisticated world where Westerners have to learn to see Chinese people for what they really are, not what they were in their minds. What do you think the major difference is between Chinese film directors and American ones and do you think that there's something that both sides can learn from one another? American directors are really tethered to the studio unless it's a very independent film. Today it's nothing to know that the director has an editor on the movie, of course, but also the actor, the movie star has his own editor, and the studio has their own editor, and everybody's working on a different cut. You know, that would not happen here in China. So I think that part is what America can learn, is that the best films come when a filmmaker is given the freedom to make the film that we all agreed that we were going to make in the beginning. Once you get past that agreement, step out of the way, because undoubtedly the man behind the camera or the woman behind the camera knows more than the guy sitting behind the desk that's never done it. But we have some very positive things in that in Hollywood there is a lot of innovation. All kinds of entrepreneurial companies and they're all creating new possibilities for cinema. Like on The Fast and the Furious when Mick Rogers and Matt Sweeney and I invented the Mick rig to be able, we changed chases and races and everything, won the Technical Academy Award for it. And that's what's wonderful about Hollywood is the innovation. And that is something that China has all kinds of stuff going on in, in the world. But in, ho in the film world, there's not as much innovation as, as one could have. You know, I think the best thing for China would be to stop looking to Hollywood to point the way and use the great engineering and mathematical and physical minds that are here to just teach us a thing or two. It would be really nice. Thank you so much for your time, Rob. Oh, my pleasure. It was lo lovely to talk to you.